when I talk maybe to my grandfather or my grandmom, when talk, they, they tell me about when they were young girls or when they were young men, they used to have a lot of rainfall, maybe from this month to this month, a lot of rainfall. And then they used to say that you used to have a big forest. The lake used to have to be very big and then you used to have several streams. But in this where we are now, they said no longer forests. There is no water, the streams have dried up. And the reason is they have cut down, creating more land for farming because they say we need farm. So they have to cut down the trees. And by doing that, they, clear the, they destroy the forests. And then it's like uh, the climate change did change because there is not more trees. The ecosystem, the pattern that used to be there has been interrupted. As I'm speaking to you, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to is a small town in Kenya, known to be lying along the Rift Valley province, considered as a Ramsar site, a home to over 300 bird species and wetlands of international importance. When we cut down our trees, the heat that is being produced by, by the sun increases. Now, Rajua, Iyo hiti kianguka kwa dunia hivi, kuna ina, inakaa kaa reflection, ina reflectiwa. Sasa iyo ozone there, in, inakuwa kaa pazia hivi. Sasa iyo ina nini, inakatika. Sasa ajua ina hit the ground, vitu zina nini, miti inakauka, stream zine zirikuwa. Tuseme watu wamekata miti hiyo, water catchment areas, zina dry. It's for this reason that communities around this area share what they know about the changing climate. Those are the trees that survived when, when the farming was going on here. This tree and that one. And you can see the, those are not dombeas. So those are the indigenous trees which was left. And they are the only two surviving now, right here at this point. And maybe somebody comes and just cut this as a normal tree. The tree is gone, the medicine is gone, and human life at, at risk. The people who are depending on this tree for medicine. Eburu, Abadea, and Mau Forest drain their streams into Lake Naivasha. It's surprised that Lake Naivasha is getting dry. Um, the, lake, the lake has actually receded so much and we actually think maybe it's the anthropogenic activities, the human activities which um, are done uh, um, locally around here. And we think that the catchment issues must be addressed um, issues of deforestation, we are losing um, our forest, maybe in Abadea, maybe in the, the Kenango Plateau. So could be it's unsustainable irrigation practices. Um, the issue of overusing the water for irrigation purposes, or rather diverting the water. And this is what we might think that those few, few, few things which we think are indicators of um, uh, 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 indicators of climate change. That at some point we can look at the history of the invasion. How has it been? How has it been dry? Is it normal? You know. And if it's not normal, what is the contribution? Wetlands around the lake basin are being threatened due to human activities contributing to micro climate change. Surely it is very painful. To me, I actually feel it's a, like a, it's a suicidal because in actual sense we can see the life that is, that is here in Neburu. It is like terminated when we see the forest or the trees are actually being cut down. In fact, I'm not all that old, but uh, the weather condition that was here some times back, it's no longer the same. In this Neburu, we used to get food plenty bump harvest but today it's a challenge to the uh, to the community i'm a Iburian, by the way and uh, it's unfortunate that we are reaching the point where we cannot even sustain our own families sometimes because of the droughts that are actually affecting the place communities may not understand the scientific way of climate change and global warming 
but within their local knowledge, they use simple indicators to tell about the felt effects of climate change over the past years. Communities around Lake Naivasha, Eburu Forest, need to plant more trees, practice sustainable agriculture, use alternative energy sources, and conserve natural resources. Actually, this is one of the activities that goes down deep into the forest of Eburu of Chakobani. And when you look around, most of the trees has been filled down because of Chakobani. This is one of the examples because most of this activity is still going on in other places of this forest. So this is one of the examples. So maybe when you'll be walking around, you'll get others. And this is not for the first time. As you have seen, there are some places where the charcoal has been burned and then they have harvested the charcoal. So this maybe was for the last one day or two days. Maybe another place the tree is being cut down. And that's why we're encouraging people to plant trees. Climate change is all above us. We can only adopt through collective responsibility. The, the, that drought or that uh, dryness or I can I don't know whether to call it the the certification. It is actually still extending towards the forest. If the trends keep continuing like this, then even the collective initiatives done to protect Lake Naivasha and its environs will not hold. The bed that you are sleeping on, it's made of tree. The, the firewood that we are using in our, like in our school, it's made of wood. Trees help in the reduction of carbon dioxide in the air. Since they breathe in, they breathe in carbon dioxide and release oxygen, which helps in human breathing. Uh, the community, in actual sense, they are actually finding it, or they are actually able to see the changes that are there. Though still, to them, it have not stuck fully, or it have not actually sinked fully in their mind. They will see it, they will talk about it, but the initiative of uh, taking maybe planting of the tree, protecting the forest and all these, still it have not sunk to the best level. From the, from the person down there to the person has to, to the government, when we work together, these things will be very easy. Because if we get farms and we get trees and we plant here, then the people will need to plant the trees. But if you don't do that, if there is no contribution from the government, if there is no contribution from the local people, then it won't work. So we need all of us to work together for us to achieve what you are, we are looking for. The community, if the community can manage the trees and conserve the, uh, the forest by themselves, it can be very helpful for them. One, the rainfall. The second thing, they will have substitutions way of harvesting the firewood, which is accepted by the by the Kenya Forest Service if they have a regular way to get them. Yeah. Another thing, it's about the bees. You see, that's a natural beehive. Yeah, they stop uh, forest burning, and because they know that their beehives are there. Eh, that's why because I have come, I have na pa, come now I na pass. We have a lot of kusimba, a kupanda i meteyako. Kawai da tafai dika, na ya tafai dika biya sababu fasto taku na pata auto ya kupalile anini. I metu saile na palile a shakula, na palile a pamoja na anini. Na met, met keto kwa mlepu. Um, telling the community, I'm telling the pupils, I'm telling the teachers and particularly the young generation who are actually also involved in a greater area on the destruction of the forest due to some point of maybe lack of employment, that um, there is need for them to understand that the tree is life. Let's look at the future generation now. Increase tree planting to clear carbon dioxide in the air. Stop charcoal burning and give alternative livelihoods of renewable energy.